Greetings folks, this video is going to be all about the Tyrannus X9D Plus. This is without a doubt my favourite piece of RC kit. This radio along with OpenTX gives me unlimited programming options, makes any other radio system seem restricted and locked down to me. With this system you can do absolutely anything. If you can think of something, you can do it. I've done a lot of videos before on using OpenTX and programming using this radio but none so far actually on the radio itself. This video and a few subsequent videos will be all about the radio and using the sensors and showing you the receivers and things like that. Alright let's have a look at this wonderful piece of kit in the box. We get a little bit of a instruction manual, some stickers but seriously most of your learning with this radio will be done on, online. There are hundreds and hundreds of videos showing you how to use this awesome piece of kit. Here's a nice brand new fresh one straight out of the box. We also get a nice neck strap and a charger as well and there's a battery inside. It has switches and knobs everywhere. On this side we have a momentary switch on this side we have a two position switch, then all the rest are three position switches. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six other switches, all three position. Uh, we have two knobs here and a slider on each side as well. One of the best controls on this radio is this slider here, or both of these sliders. I use them all the time. I absolutely love those sliders. We have a nice big LCD screen here and six buttons down the side as well. Trim switches everywhere. A little speaker here and on the back we have the battery bay and a built-in 2000 milliamp hour uh, nickel metal hydride battery you can change that out for a lipo if you want to this works fine you've actually got a charging plug here as well you can just charge up the battery in the radio that's the easiest way to do it just take the battery out you might see in here we also have a little SD card slot here and it comes with an SD card, micro SD card I should say. I'll we'll talk more about that a little bit later on. You also have a headphone plug and a mini USB plug there as well. One of the most important features is you can plug this in and update the firmware, connect it to a uh, a computer-based app called uh, OpenTX Companion. You can do all your configuring, model setup actually on your computer. You can transfer models from radio to radio. The most important thing about a radio is the integrity of the RC connection and the range that you can get. And this radio gives you one of the best ranges and the most solid RC connections of all different systems. It's often quoted, uh, this radio with the normal, trans uh, normal receivers is gives you a range of over one and a half kilometers. Um, I can actually tell you I've tested this out to three kilometers and still had control of the model. Has to be perfect conditions of course. Just with standard receiver and antenna. It uses, uh, so it has uh, an, an internal module, uh, 16 channels, a, what is it, the ACCST, the Automatic Continuous Channel searching something or other like that. I don't know, anyway, it's a continuous searching protocol. Uh, but we also have a, a spare bay in here that you can put other RF modules in. Uh, you can buy modules to work with Graupner, Spectrum, Futaba, all the different radio protocols you can operate with the Tyrannus. You can also put a second FRSky module in here, uh, which would give you 32 channels, if you'd ever need that many channels. Now one of the best things about this radio, or this radio system, is that it's quite cheap. These radios, uh, the Tyrannus X9D Plus, cost about $200 US. The receivers, there's an enormous array of receivers for different applications and uh, telemetry sensors. You've got telemetry with this radio as well too, that's, that's one of the biggest features is you have cheap plug and play telemetry straight out of the radio. The receivers, the top of the range X series receivers, uh, this is the X8R, 8 channel receiver with telemetry, S bus and PPM capable as well. Uh, how much are they? About $34 US. There's a 6 channel, probably my most common receiver, and you get them for about $30 US. 
Here's uh, another six channel receiver. This one has stabilization built in. Cost of that uh, around about $30, $32. You can get an eight channel ver version of that as well. Uh, there's the D4R four channel receiver with PPM. Cost, I don't know, 20 bucks, something like that. There's a four channel, there's two X4R receivers. Uh, this is just a, a pure four channel receiver. X4R, about $25. Uh, this is an X4R SB, which is actually a three channel receiver, but it has S bus, so you can actually get 16 channels if you connect by S bus to that receiver. That's, uh, that's the receiver to use if you're using a flight control board. You can get cheaper third party receivers as well for, oh, I don't know, $15, something like that. Uh, and they work okay for close range, but they haven't got the long range and uh, rock solid connection as of these other X series receivers. But if you're desperate, you can use them. Now, some of the telemetry sensors. This is a current sensor, 40 amp current sensor. Uh, this can tell you the current, the battery voltage, and the consumption, milliamp hour consumption. Very, very useful sensor, that one. This one is a LiPo sensor. You plug this into the balance port of your battery. It'll give you the voltage of each cell and the whole pack voltage as well. That's a very nice, lightweight, good for use on gliders and things like that, or just when you don't want to use a, an inline current sensor, you can just pop this voltage sensor on to keep a track on your battery voltage. This one's probably my favourite sensor. It's a variometer uh, for use in gliders to tell you if you're uh, in lift or sink. Also tells you the altitude and can record uh, a graph of your altitude as well, which is great to look at after a thermal flight. And finally we have a GPS sensor as well, which can record your flight track, speed, distance, height, all those sorts of things. Price of the GPS is about 33 US. So what we have is a relatively cheap but amazingly powerful and great functioning radio. Where's the catch, you say? Well, the catch is the the hardware is not the highest quality. The switches, they work fine, but they wear out eventually. Uh, and where I take them down the beach, sort of slope soaring off the coastal dunes, the switches end up rusting a little bit. But all the parts are available and they're quite cheap as well. One of the first things I did with my first Tyrannus about well, three years ago was to drop it and I broke the screen. I could just order another screen, plug it in, and it was good to go, go again. All the switches, uh, are replaceable, the main board, everything, the speaker, you can buy different antennas. Although the actual, what the radio is made of isn't the highest quality itself, it is very, very hackable. And uh, this is what I've done with another Tyrannus. I've put a, an alternate skin, a carbon fibre look skin. Um, I have swapped the momentary switch from there over to this side because that works better for me launching discus launch gliders. I've done an antenna mod so that I can unscrew the main antenna and pop on a higher gain antenna for even longer range. And with this one I've also installed the Hall Effect gimbals which uh, improve the quality, improve the feel and the accuracy of the uh, gimbals. Some things I would like to see improved are a better quality speaker or at least the option of a better quality speaker. You can probably find one yourself but um, yeah, this stock speaker isn't all that good. It's okay, but uh, not great. And better quality switches would be good too. So now I'll show you uh, the screen and some of the software inside uh, quickly. Now, Tyrannus and OpenTX has the reputation of being quite uh, complex and computer nerdy sort of system. It can be complex, and I'll show you through all the screens that it comes with, and you can see why it seems complex, but you can use it as a simple radio. It can be as simple as you like, or as compli to open complex as you like. So we get the splash screen. You can put your own splash screen on there too, by the way. Failsafe warning, because we haven't set up failsafe on uh, the first model. Click through that. Here's the model screen. As you can see, we've got uh, a picture of the model there. We can choose from hundreds of different pre-loaded uh, model pictures. It, if you've got a purchased model, you're probably going to find the uh, bitmap for it in there. Page through, and it just shows you different control screens, all the different switches, what they're doing. 
there's the channels monitor shows you all the 16 channels and what they're all doing and back to the model again now we've pushed the menu button then we can choose all the different models we've got 60 model slots there and we can page through to the programming so this is the model setup I'm just going to go through this quickly um, it may seem complex but you really don't have to go into the complexity you can use it as simply as you want got a couple of timers to set up there uh, if we just scroll down uh, you can adjust how the the trims work uh, and keep going down this is where you select what sort of uh, receiver you're using this is where we assign an individual number if you're using an X series receiver you can assign an individual receiver numbers which means that you'll never get two receivers mixed up and you won't be able to operate the wrong receiver which is a great safety feature this is where you bind and this is where you check the range uh, fail safe you can set up different fail safe methods either on the radio or on the receiver you can get it to hold you can set up a custom position for fail safe or you can set up no pulses you can this is where if you have a, an external um, module plugged in the back you can choose that and this is where you set up how the trainer feature is going to work All right, let's go to the next page uh, depending on which version of the of the firmware or how you set up the firmware you can you can include or not include certain screens this is the heli setup screen which i've never used so in my version of the firmware i just untick the heli heli screen and it doesn't show up flight modes a very advanced feature but that i don't use at all but basically they can uh, at the flick of a switch you can call up all these different trim settings you don't need to worry about that unless you're into advanced sailplane flying or or very complex models forget about that one inputs you can forget about this screen too actually I hardly ever use this screen but if you're going to put in expo and rates and um, a differential and those sorts of things this is the this is the screen you would use if you have a very complex model this is the mixer screen which is the one that I use all the time there you just you just pop in the controls assign which control goes to which channel um, and make any mixes you need to next page is the outputs this is where you can limit the maximum movement of the servo or the mid position of the servo you can reverse servos here this is the curve screen every sort of channel you can assign a curve to it to make it behave a little bit differently very complex but very very useful I actually do use the curve screen a little bit and I'll show you in some of the mixes that I've done actually have a look at the playlist and you'll see how I've used curves for global variables another very advanced feature and uh, that sort of goes in hand with the flight modes you can use it for things like um, having variable rates and things like that but yeah just don't worry about that for the moment you don't really need it logical switches another very advanced feature including all the physical switches on the radio you can set up software switches that uh, come into effect when a certain set of parameters meet a certain value for example uh, I set up a logical switch for the RSSI value the radio will automatically tell you when the signal strength is low but uh, I've gone even a little bit further and set up a logical switch so that when the signal strength goes below 50 decibels it will start reading out to me the actual uh, RSSI uh, values and that's using a logical switch they're, they're basically just like normal switches but with software rather than physical switches special functions this is where you assign all the switches uh, this is where you get voice prompts um, telemetry feedback all this sort of stuff you set up in the special functions that's a very very useful screen that one and telemetry this is where you connect the sensors uh, and tell the sensors how to behave I'll show you that in the next video uh, that's a lot of fun I really enjoy doing that and we're back to the model now We'll escape out of there long press of the menu and you get to radio setup so you set up the time and the behavior of the radio itself how long the splash screen stays on the color of the screen and all that sort of stuff uh, this is the contents of the SD card uh, that's a bit too complex to go into at the moment global functions these are functions that affect every model on the radio uh, you can set up a volume switch on the right slider is what I've done here and this one is uh, getting the telemetry logs to record onto the SD card whenever I turn the SA switch to the middle position 
lots of stuff you can do like that. Setting up the trainer mode, uh, the version of the firmware. This firmware is 2.1.6. At the moment it's 2.2, uh, which is quite different to 2.1 actually. Test the switches, um, all the trims and all that sort of stuff. You can test that they're working properly here. These are the actual readouts from the different uh, analog inputs. Don't really understand that. Battery calibration, you can actually calibrate the battery voltage so that your battery alarm is working properly. Setting up sticks and pots and all that sort of stuff. Calibrate, this is where you calibrate the radio to make sure it's all working, all the sticks and the pots are all working to the right limits. You'd probably do that after you've flashed it with new firmware. Let's set up another model. Create model. There we go. So choose what sort of model. You can see you've got aeroplane, heli, flying wing, quads. Let's go for an aeroplane, show you how to do it. And so it walks you through. This is this is how you can use the, the radio simply. You can walks you through all your setup, which channel the engine's connected to, the ailerons are connected. It just walks you through it and then you'll end up with a properly set up model. So it, although there's a lot in there. You don't need to use all the complex settings. You can just set up your model using that little wizard and then just go fly, basically. You just need to learn the few little things that you need, gradually learn the more complex and more advanced settings. This radio will allow you to do absolutely anything you want. Okay, so that's probably enough for this one. I don't want to get too complex. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to show uh, how to set up receivers and telemetry and give voice prompts and things like that. Very good. Thanks for watching.